you could see here your host for Influence in the Need to Know. Welcome. Um, I, as you can see here on the screen, I have with me today um, Coach Crystal Springy. I'm going to be interviewing her today. She's going to talk to all of you about how to implement uh, your stress response strategies that we talked about last week. But before we do that, I just want to do a quick intro to the show for any of the new people who are just joining us. We are in week 14 of the Resilient Series. And um, I encourage all of you, if this is the first program that you're watching, you'll get all, you, this program stands on its own. You're going to get a lot of great information today. But do go back and view the last 13 weeks of information that we've already covered. In the beginning, we laid out the blueprint for you on um, how to be more resilient. And resilience really is about mental, emotional, physical resilience in what is probably the most challenging environment that any of us have potentially even experienced in our lifetime between our pandemic, political unrest, civil unrest. If you're in Southern California, you know, wildfires, all kinds of craziness going on. Um, resilience is more critical now than ever. So we've laid out the blueprint. There's four key pillars to resilience, sleep optimization, stress response management, which we're going to talk in detail about today, uh, nutrition and exercise, which we'll be talking about in the upcoming weeks. Um, through this series, I've taken you from information about those four pillars. Uh, in the middle of this uh, 13 weeks, I gave a, a, a couple of episodes on tools that you could use and why, how to develop your why. Um, moving you from information gathering to commitment. And then in the most recent weeks, we've moved into now what's the work, right? I, I'm clear about why I want to do this. I've gotten all the information. I understand the blueprint. Now I want to actually know what do I have to do in each of these areas. We've covered sleep already the first couple of weeks. Now we're talking about stress response management. Last week, I laid out the specific daily routine that you need to be consistently applying in order to manage stress response. And I talked a lot about what stress response is. So be sure to go back and watch that episode. But essentially those key areas were um, four, four pieces of work, right? Starting your day with a meditation or biofeedback, setting a reminder throughout the day to deep breathe, ending your day with, again, some biofeedback or meditation, and then finally, going to sleep with a sleep meditation. So that is the work, that's the routine. Uh, and, and Coach Crystal is here today really to talk to us about, now, now that we know the pieces of work, how do we actually implement that into our lives? We all have different circumstances. So Crystal is uh, certified as a nutritional therapy and Reiki practitioner. And I've worked with her for a number of years. She worked for a long time in my private practice. Um, she combines nutritional counseling, whole foods education, stress response management techniques to help her clients transform their health in small, sustainable ways that make a large lasting impact. That's what we're all about, right? How do we, how do we become resilient? How do we optimize our health um, so that we can have the vitality we all deserve? Um, she has nine years of experience in holistic health care, working with different in different health venues. My office was one of those, functional medicine, acupuncture, she's worked with chiropractors um, in various integrative medicine venues and has developed a deep understanding of what it takes, that's why I've worked with her, uh, to truly optimize um, one's health. And she specializes in the areas of digestion, mental health, autoimmune disorder. So welcome, Crystal. I'm so happy that you were able to join us. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to you to really kind of lead us through um, your experience working with hundreds of clients on, is particularly the stress management area. This seems to be a, a, a tricky area for all of us to integrate into a busy, stressful life. So take it away. Yeah, I think it's the trickiest, but also really the most important one to really implement into our lives. Um, when I'm working with my clients, I like to very start off by being very clear that, um, when we say stress response management, it's not changing stressors in our world because, you know, stressors that are currently happening right now, um, there's always just going to be new ones occurring. So it's really changing our responses to the stressors, our reactions, our emotions towards um, just the stressors that are always going to be constant in our lives. And then also too, I really help them understand like what is stress because sometimes someone's sitting in front of me and they're like, 
oh no, I don't, I don't stress. I don't have any stress in my life. Like I'm so stress free. But then what I define stress is basically, um, our body's always trying to reach a state of homeostasis, always trying to be in balance. So a stress to the body is any acute threat to homeostasis. So it's not only, um, political stressors. It's not only work or family stressors, but also, you know, poor nutritional habits is a huge stress on the body. A lack of sleep is a stress on the body. Um, medications, lots of antibiotics, all of these things can be, you know, considered a stress. Um, and if you guys, I really encourage you also to watch the last video because Pam had a really great scenario that I always talk about too of the lion or the cougar chasing you in the jungle and how our body really reacts to stressors. Um, so of course nowadays we don't, well, besides that one guy, we don't have, technically don't have lions chasing us in the jungle. Um, but now just our whole world has really just become that lion now. Yeah. 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 And I, I think the nervous system just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's so primitive. It, it, it has not evolved in its ability to determine the difference, right. In those stressors, right. Fortunately it worked for our young man who was being chased by the cougar. But I think for the majority of us, you know, our nervous systems are kind of out of tune with what's really a danger and what's just simply something that we're anxious about. Right, right. And, and why it's so important, like I said earlier, to really have this as a key thing to implement is because when we are in a stress response, you can call it like the fight or flight, or you can call it the sympathetic nervous system. Um, that's the most important thing that happens, you know, lions chasing you in the jungle, all that matters in that moment is your survival. So that sympathetic nervous system steals all the resources from every other system in your body. Um, shuts down your digestive system. It steals res um, resources from all of your reproductive hormones. It dysre dysregulates your blood sugar, your insulin, increases your heart rate, blood pressure. Um, and being in that state 24 seven is when it gets really detrimental. And you know all the other systems in your body just be begin to shut down because it's not getting the resources it needs to work optimally. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm actually going to interview, um, perhaps in a week or, or two, uh, a cardiologist, a, a um, originally interventional, now integrative cardiologist to talk a little bit more about the effects of stress response on our cardiovascular system and some of the dangers that poses for us as, we, as we're aging when we don't you know, appropriately manage our response to stress. Right, right. And especially too for um, when I'm working with my clients, like, you know, my main education is on nutrition. But what I'm really realizing is that the foods that they're eating, it does, it's, it's not all about the food. It's about the emotions that they're feeling. It's about the stressors. You said last week in the video that, you know, you're craving so much sugary foods because in a fight or flight situation, you need a surge of glucose to run from the lion in the jungle. Um, so you're going to be craving a lot more sugary foods. Yeah, you won't have the motivation to really focus on the right foods. But then also too, even if someone's having the perfect, perfect diet, taking all the supplements they need, if um, their digestive system is shut down and you're not absorbing any of those nutrients, it's kind of just really counteractive and not as effective. So I really like combining the two with my work with my clients. And honestly, sometimes it's not even, <laughs> I can't even focus on diet until I work with them, which we'll talk about today on really how to implement these key things into their daily routine. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And I, and I think the challenge is that, you know, it's easy for me to, you know, state in the video last week, the, the four key things to do, but it's a whole other process to actually do them. So I'm right. anxious to hear, you know, when you're working with your clients, who all have varied and different backgrounds and different daily demands on them, um, how you kind of coach them through that process of, of implementing, you know, some of these strategies. Yeah. So my first thought too, is just really everyone recognizing that is, this is all a personalized journey that not one thing is going to work for one person. So just really kind of take all of this. And, and that's where one-on-one -on -one coaching is really helpful because we really dissect your lifestyle and really focus step by step by step on what's the easiest for you to first implement. Um, I think just being aware is really always that first step, starting to be really mindful throughout your day of where are your thoughts going? How are you reacting to these thoughts? Because 
I, I mean, for myself, like I can go like days without just my mind just going so fast. And like, I don't even take a moment to like really recognize or take a step back and like, wow, like I've just been in the future in the past and I haven't really been in this present moment. Right. Um, and I think too, when we think about stress, it's always in the past or it's always in the future. Mm -hmm. Present moment is always just kind of where that peace happens, unless you know, you're in that line in the jungle and that's when you actually need to have that stress response. And if it's happening in the present moment, that's when you actually have to worry and stress about something. Um, but other than that, you're just kind of ruining your peace for that moment. So really being aware, like I said, is that first step. Um, and so also too, I, cause I, I saw your, your bullet points. So what my work would be is really getting someone who rolls, pret snooze on their alarm clock five times, rolls out of bed just before they need to get ready and turn that into starting their day with the 20 minutes. Cause I completely agree that having just that quiet 20 minutes before starting your day is just something really, really, really important to focus mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and it's not easy. I'm not, none of this is really easy. So it's def, like I said, definitely a personalized process for that. Um, but one, just being aware, I really like what you said about the time, the timers mm -hmm. throughout the day to remind you just to take a deep breath. And really, and I think, it, you know, depending on the situation that you're in when the timer goes off, the point of the timer is to create that momentary mindfulness, right? To bring you back from whatever thought process you're in, right? As you had mentioned, important to become kind of more centered in the present moment and more aware to use some kind of a timer like that, uh, that can bring you back. That's why it's called mindfulness bell is because that's exactly what its intention is, is to bring you back to the present moment where you can be mindful. And when you can, if you're not in a meeting or busy with some work thing at that point, to check in with yourself and see kind of where you're at emotionally. Are you stressing over something? Are you anxious or fearful or, uh, or maybe frustrated? And, um, you know, what are some of the strategies that you could use at that point to redirect, you know, deep breath is probably the quickest, easiest, you know, thing I would think. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great just as a reminder to bring you back to that mm -hmm. present moment. And that's where the awareness comes into that point too. Like even throughout the day, even without that, timer if you feel like that surge of anxiousness to really just sit back and take that deep breath um what could also really be helpful is finding like habitual moments throughout your day when you do take a deep breath so for example for me i'll be filling up my water bottle and in those moments i found myself being super anxious and super impatient for my water bottle to fill up but i've learned that those are the moments that i take and take a few deep breaths bring myself back and i do that every day a few times a day um, another way that I do it is like my front door, we have that little keypad. And again, it takes a while for it to turn. I used to find myself being impatient, but those are the moments too that I really start taking deep breaths. Great. So really trying to find those moments throughout your day that you can begin those habits of, because the deep breath, why we keep talking about it, why it's so important is because we have those two states, right? The sympathetic fight or flight nervous system. And then we have our parasympathetic, which is the rest and digest. And a deep breath is what brings you from sympathetic to the parasympathetic state. And that's why we keep talking about um, the deep breathing, um, the biofeedback that you talked about that's surrounded by the deep breath. Um, yoga is all about the deep breath. Meditation is all about the deep breaths. Right, right. Yeah, any of those activities, I think that are um, you know, that, that, and there aren't many, as I said last week, you know, right. it, it, that, that you can really employ in stress response management, not exercise. You know, a lot of people say, well, I exercise and that helps me manage my stress. Not actually. Ex exercise is actually a stress on the body right. um, and it fits in its own category. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what we see that the, the techniques that we use all have in common is the deep breath, to your point, the thing, really the one thing that, that, that takes us from that kind of sympathetic to the parasympathetic um, tone of the nervous system. Yeah, so important. Yeah, so important. and also too, because of course too, and this, these are all tips to really kind of 
slowly start lowering your nervous system throughout the day to be able to get you to the point where you can sit for 20 minute, even an eight to 10 minute meditation is difficult for people. Mm -hmm. um, what I also recommend, and I love this, the, the, um, the word flow state is really encouraging my clients to get into a flow state as often as possible. Um, and a flow state is basically that you're so immersed in the present moment that you kind of forget like your, your mind is just so focused. Your mind isn't focused on all the other things. Your mind isn't focused on the to-do list or what I need to do. And I mean, only imagine like what's going through your mind all day long. So really kind of getting back to different hobbies that they enjoy, interests that they enjoy that really bring them into this calm flow state. So cooking could be something like that, reading, gardening, um, I mean, crocheting, knitting, something anything. Cre a lot of times creative, something that yeah. you're creating. I remember yeah. I, periods, and I, I remember this very distinctly when I was little, um, when I would color. It mm -hmm. would put me in a, what I recognize now, of course, as an adult looking back was a flow state, but I, I remember distinctly that feeling. And I think it's become kind of popular again for now adults, you know, like coloring books. And, yeah. you know, so many of us get so busy in our lives that we lose that creative um, side of us that I think pins us kind of anchors us in the moment because you have to be focused, so focused on what you're doing in order for you to get the outcome that you want, that it keeps you present. So great idea. Great idea. Yeah. And then that's when I'll work with my clients. Like what are some things that you remember doing in the past and hobbies that you used to do that you've really gotten away from in the stressful world? Or are there any things that um, you want to do, you want to learn? Because those are all things that, like I said, the present moment is where that piece, the parasympathetic state, your nervous system is low, and you're not in this fight or flight mode. Um, so that's kind of, again, one of those first steps to just really getting back to really the enjoyment of life right. and happiness. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. So Crystal, take us through um, the, you know, maybe, maybe just, we'll just use a, you know, maybe a scenario of, uh, I, I'm your client and, and I'm a, a, a busy um, maybe I'm a busy mom, I've got three kids and now schools are out and I'm responsible for homeschooling my kids. I also have my own job and now I have to be doing that at home in between things. And um, I'm, I'm really struggling with any perceived anyway, I don't perceive that I have the time to manage my stress response, but my stress is so much higher now than it ever has been. Um, you know, and obviously your recommendations of tying, you know, things to a particular um, activity during the day and getting into a flow state, but how would you take me through that? Um, uh, maybe just give us sort of a taste of when you're working with a client, how do, what, what are some of the things that you want to know about them in order to personalize what you're doing? Um, I mean, what I would first initially know is just kind of what their daily routine looks like because mm -hmm. that because there's, oh, there's always moments throughout the day where you can find find time to make this a priority it always has to be a priority so that's why when i know this series a long time or a couple of videos ago you talked about the why mm -hmm. so my client just really really getting back to why they're making these changes why they want to be able to implement these habits because you know a busy mom all day long can say i don't have the time i don't have time but if she's really looking at the bigger picture of why she wants to do this she might make those moments a bigger priority throughout her day right. um you could always involve the kids and teach them these moments too if you know the issue is that the kids are always around and you don't have this alone time involve the kids I think that's critically important. I mean, we are an example to them, right? So, you know, having, I, I, I think it's great to encourage, you know, people to involve their families in these processes. Because a lot of times I think we do use that as an excuse of, as to why we can't do something. Oh, I'm, you know, my family comes first or I'm too busy or, you know, I, I have too many things to do for others in my household. Not recognizing that in doing something for yourself, you're showing them, setting an example uh, so that they don't end up in the same situation, right, later on. Oh, right, right. 
And then also too, like you said, it's looking out for yourself first. It might be hard to tell a mom that, but if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not taking care of your, you know, your mental and emotional health, you're not going to be able to do anything for your kids. You're not going to be as present for your kids. So I think that's a good point of really, really making yourself that priority. So even if it's a struggle to get the kids to do it, find that time for yourself. So, I mean, it's so, it's so personalized for everyone. So it's really that one-on-one -on -one time where we really dissect the schedule of where is a quick five to eight minutes that you have where you can sit and just listen to a meditation app mm -hmm. um, or do a few of the biofeedback. I mean, that's really amazing with just following the breath. And even if it, and all of those apps have different set times that you right. can do. Right. Or, you know, you're driving to the grocery store right before you go into the grocery store, you're alone, you're in the, maybe alone, you're in the car, setting that meditation app and listening to, right, to the meditation. And maybe everybody in the car does it with you, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And that's where it kind of goes to come to like those meditation apps. I love the Calm app. I love Headspace. Insight Timer is one of my new favorites mm -hmm. right now. Um, Sarah Blondin is amazing. All of her meditations, I just love and highly recommend. And like I said, they all have set different time frames. So if you have 10 minutes, if you have five minutes, those are things that you can put on throughout the day. Hopefully then leading up to starting the five minutes in the morning, doing the five minutes at night, and then building up to the 20. Right. Okay. Good. Um, when I talk about meditation, a lot of people kind of like roll their eyes. I think people have misconceptions of what meditation is. Um, it's not about not thinking. It's not about clearing your mind. Um, a lot of people say it's really difficult for them to do it. And when I say that, that means you need it the most because when it's difficult for them to just sit and be still and be in that present moment, that means your nervous system is just way too high really and that's when you really need to work through the uncomfortable feelings of that's when you're lowering that nervous system mm -hmm. um and then meditation of course like i said it's not about not thinking it's about being in the present moment activating your five senses what do you hear what do you see what do you feel so you know the kids are screaming and stuff downstairs you can use that to your advantage because that's in the present moment right. Right. <laughs> that's what you're hearing it may and then breathing through, you know, maybe some of the, 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 the angst that arises during that. But, and then the idea is to kind of be in a meditative state all day long. Mm -hmm. So basically being in the present moment all day long. Right. So what do you feel? What do you hear? What do you see? What's happening right now in front of you? Right. Okay. It's a meditative state. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> and, and. What do you find um, as far as the stress response management, you know, piece of it? I mean, I know that when you're working with a client, you're working on multiple levels, right? Looking at their, uh, helping them get their gut function in line and their nutrition and their activity level and optimizing their sleep. Um, how do you see the stress response management piece or the routine that you help them to incorporate in the, into their life, how do you see that impacting these kind of other um, areas? I mean, you, you know, I think help the audience to understand that critical nature of stress response management as it relates to kind of these, you know, these other areas. Um, you mean like diet and nutrition? How? Yeah, we're... yeah. I mean, I think you know, with uh, what, what I see at least from a professional side, working directly with clients is that you know that that we need all of the pillars of the foundation stress response management is a critical piece of that um and it has such an impact on all of the other um you know all of the other um, pillars so just helping that our viewing audience to kind of understand we're talking about it sort of out of context right here's a here's a regimen that you can do i as a coach work with you to help you figure out how to build that into your busy daily schedule. Um, but it's not the only piece, right? You're, it, it, it's going to have an impact on the ability for your body to accept good nutrition and the motivation to exercise and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's so much to that question. I guess my first thing would be food 
like I said earlier, is one of the main things that will put you into a stress response. Mm -hmm. I recognize for myself, like when I'm off my normal roots, diet routine and I'm eating more sugary foods, drinking a lot more alcohol, you're a lot more emotional. And that's a stressor that you're putting directly into your body. So then you're going to be a lot more reactive to different stressors around. And then kind of on the, the flip side of that too, when you're um, then when you're more emotional, then when you're more reactive, then you're craving so much more of these sugary, stressful foods to give you that surge of energy that you need. Um, another reason why it's so important is because people use food as a coping mechanism right. to kind of help dull their stresses. Like, you know, comfort food is always something. So our food has been genetically modified purposefully to temporarily raise our dopamine levels. So people who are just in a stressful emotional state, they crave these foods because, you know, in the past it temporarily made them feel good. It made them feel healthy. It relieved all of their stress. Um, so that's why too, especially when someone who like, for example, I'm very, um, supportive of the Whole30 program. And it's really difficult for people to eliminate these foods because then, you know, when they're stressed out and when they have such a busy day, like now, now they have to feel these emotions. Right. They don't have these foods. They don't have their glass of wine at the end of the day to dull all those emotions. So that's where too, that work kind of comes into play of really recognizing um, how you're using food as this tool and what other what other um, techniques can you use that's more of a healthier, proactive, long-term um, approach to it? Yeah, and something that will really address stress response, you know, because to your point, the food just really um, is more of a temporary uh, illusion, if you will. It doesn't actually do anything to um, retrain the nervous system to not be in constant stress response. So. Um, so, you know, thank you so much, Crystal. I mean, it's, it, it's I think to recap um, some of the key points that you made, you know, there's a lot of opportunity during the day that you could tie your deep breathing to some type of an activity, uh, as you pointed out, like taking the time to fill your water bottle. Or um, I know for me, you know, driving in my car from one place to another can be one of those uh, times that I can become much more mindful and use um, you know, some of the, the stress response management techniques like deep breathing. And um, I, I um, the, the different techniques that you mentioned, like biofeedback is, and I mentioned last week, by the way, for all of you watching um, some specifics about uh, a, a tool and a company that you can use there. But I also loved the discussion about the flow state. And I think that's, you know, that's something that I hadn't really thought about until you brought it up. And I think it's it's really something that's missing for so many of us, especially now um, that there's been such a shift in the way we conduct our lives on a daily basis. You know, we've really gotten so far away from the things that are more inherent when we're children, right? Those creative uh, times that we take out during the day to color or, you know, have some kind of um, creative art that we're doing or cooking or as you, to you, as to you pointed out, the gardening and things like that. So. Um, um, I really appreciate your time with us and helping us to understand a little bit better what the importance of personalizing, right? Understanding that when you're watching a program like this, that the information is more generalized and that, you know, you do have to figure out how to take a, you know, bullet pointed list of of um, suggestions, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes at the end of the day. To your point, many people uh, would struggle with that right out of the gate if they've never done it. So working with uh, a um, health coach such as yourself to help you, know, help you personalize this information in a usable way, I think is important. And that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you on the program so that you could help people understand that there are people like you out there that can help them implement this. So if you're really struggling, you know, guys, with the stuff I've talked about in the last 13 weeks, if you're having trouble taking the information from an interest to a commitment and really starting to do this work, think about working with a health coach such as Crystal um, to, to help you figure out how to take that information and really plug it in to your, um, to your personal 
experience, especially since for many of us that's changed in a major way over the last several months. So um, I please reach out. I'll make sure that you get uh, Crystal's direct contact information. Uh, and you can always reach me again on my website or call me directly, uh, or you can email me at pam at level10health.com. So thank you so much again, Crystal. Really appreciate your feedback today. And we will have Crystal on the show as a regular feature going forward because um, I think it's really important to have a personalized perspective on the information that I'm sharing each week. So until the next time, everyone, take care and have a great week. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.